Okay, so this, these are sprayed materials, and you can see the scalar waves, uh, harp manipulation, and these are being. Let's see, we have we have zero wind. We also have a massive amount of mosquitoes out this particular year uh, and I'm a little concerned about the mosquitoes um, who knows how these mosquitoes may be manipulated. Now, if you can see those mosquitoes in that light or not, but anyway, we have the manipulation of these sprayed materials here. You can see I've nicknamed them leopard clouds. They have these sort of leopard stripes to them and so these clouds can be manipulated they can be pushed pulled expanded or condensed according to microwave radio transmission manipulation we look to the south here we can see there are some lines some sprayed lines or if they're not sprayed lines they are sprayed materials that are forming into these lines the leopard lines and so we had some rain um, basically came out of nowhere uh, this morning and so this is the evening it's already about oh it's 9 p.m. here Pacific time uh, beginning of June so it is likely that uh, they're trying to condense these. Now, let's talk about the science behind weather manipulation a little bit. Uh, Dane Wigginton has talked about ice nucleation where it's similar to those emergency ice packs where ba basically you just crush the packs or mix the, the chemicals together and you get ice. And so that that's a easy to understand science. Basically, you know, you can buy a, a small uh, laboratory at your pharmacy. Just get one of those emergency ice packs. Look at it. See how it works. Okay. And uh, another aspect of this weather manipulation: if you condense air and release the condensation rapidly then you will get coldness and so basically if you compress air which is basically the opposite it is likely you will get heat isn't that so isn't that a law of thermodynamics so for instance have you ever bought one of those little cans of compressed air for cleaning out your computer or cleaning dust off your computer monitor or out of a computer cooling fan or something if you spray that compressed air you you can try this experiment at home if you spray that compressed air out rapidly you'll find that that can get super cold in you know just a few seconds 
And so basically, if you create a sort of a, a pressure zone and then release that air rapidly, you can, 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 you can create a cooled a cooled area. Now I basically barely passed the high school. I've had some uh, junior college. I didn't quite make it into college. I took a few college classes on on the on the side, but I never really uh, went to college. I uh, kind of had it found it hard to work in that system, frankly. So anyway, um, this is this is just my theory. Okay, let's let's take a look at these mosquitoes over here. Now, if you can see that, it's a little hard to see these mosquitoes, but we have. You can see you can see that light going off right there. That's basically a swarm of mosquitoes, and we've had a lot of mosquitoes. They're getting pretty close to me. I might have to get out of here in a minute. But, uh, yeah, it's very likely that Bill Gates has weaponized these mosquitoes here. And they're coming down on me right now. But, yeah. So, yeah, those little flashes of light are when the light hits the mosquitoes. It's basically a swarm there. And yeah, we got a pretty good swarm of them there. What I've actually been doing is I will spray them with a uh, barbecue cleaner. They have the barbecue cleaner at the dollar store. And if they get sort of mean, I'll uh, start spraying the packs with uh, the barbecue, grill cleaner, whatever. I don't know if you can see that or not, but basically. And then here we have the leopard skin clouds once again. Now, like I was going to say, these, these clouds are... They are moving uh, west, and they're actually pulsing. They're slightly pulsing, so that's to me an indication. Yeah, they will move and stop and move and stop. So that's an indication to me that they are being manipulated. And I would say that they've got a 20 mile an hour wind or 20 mile an hour movement to them. And if you can see by the tops of the trees, we don't have any wind at all. So that indicates to me that these materials are being manipulated by uh, heating or cooling area somewhere. And let's go over that science again. So basically what they can do is they can use HARP, which is basically a sort of a transmitter that they can transmit up to this to the upper upper atmosphere and push it out uh, beyond what it's normally uh, what it normally where it normally is and so by pushing out the uh, ionosphere they can create vacuums or pressure zones and then as they heat the ionosphere and then let it cool, they can uh, strategically push or pull uh, jet streams. So as you can see here we have, we have the leopard cloud action to it. And uh, once again, this is like the iron filings around a magnet and So basically, it's what I call remote control clouds. And so 
And once again, they would rather not have you know about it because um, if you're trying to take advantage of somebody, and I uh, don't, you know, take this whole concept with everybody, but I believe that there are the military industrial complex basically, you know, followed by whatever operation paperclip and uh, the whatever uh, banksters that rule the country, they like to manipulate people without them knowing it. And so that's the, that's the ultimate, uh, as far as I'm concerned, about, you know, um, power. So if these people, the, the multinational banksters that print the money and motivate people to do things for them, um, now we got mosquitoes here buzzing around. Uh, yeah, those people would not want people to know that uh, they're being manipulated somehow. So this whole thing is covert. It's, it's, it's covert. And the people down the line, the uh, our local, whatever, regional state representatives are basically could be you know manipulated by them too so and everything is on a sort of a need to know basis car compartmentalized where no one really uh, down the line knows what you know the true agenda is uh, of those people that are uh, that have the need to manipulate other people in a co coercive, coercive way. So that's why they have the whole uh, the whole uh, you know conspiracy theory out there of anything that uh, and here we see we can see actually. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but basically I have a light in front of us that um, we see there are particulates falling in the air. There are some sort of particulates falling in the air, and we can see it by the reflection of this light I have in front of me. I don't know if you can see that. Um, sometimes you can use a black light to do that too, and you can see quite a bit of uh, materials falling. Um, from the air now these materials that are falling have to be pretty big um, in order for them to start reflecting this light uh, that I have pointed out straight out in front but anyway it, it just proves that there are certain things in the air that we are not seeing right now and it's very likely these materials are the materials they use for uh, over the horizon radar, the barium, strontium uh, that they don't tell you about. And that reminds me, this whole thing about the Navy's uh, Northwest testing and training off the coast basically gives them more, uh, more whatever rights to test and train any kind of weapons they want and, and I quite often hear the harp frequencies in the morning very often about two, two o'clock in the morning it's uh, the time when people are uh, in their uh, most uh, whatever deep sleep and so uh, anyway back to that Navy thing uh, I I uh, I've actually asked some people that were interviewing our local congressman um, if the Navy's Northwest Training Testing and Training Program was testing and training uh, the Navy for weather warfare, and I never heard a response back from that. And of course, my congressman has the quote they have a quote at the congressman's office I don't buy that and basically what it means is 
no one pays them enough. Like the person who is asking them about it is not paying their salary, the way I understand it, not paying their salary or not paying them enough to talk about it, basically. So if you notice in at one town hall meeting, my congressman, uh, you know, was asked about geoengineering and chemtrails, and basically, the um, he immediately shifted. Well, no, I don't believe in the conspiracy theory, the global conspiracy. You know of spraying chemicals out the back of a jet and didn't actually mention anything about geoengineering. I basically tried to uh, shift the topic to um, a conspiracy theory. So, and when I first walked into my congressman's office about that that was the first thing they said they said oh are you talking about the chemtrails and because if you google chemtrails you'll probably see that the whole propaganda campaign is out there saying oh chemtrails do not exist it's a conspiracy theory theory and so anyway that's one of the things that's motivated me uh, to expose the chemtrail uh, actions here in locally and there are a few YouTube videos uh, about from other people who have posted um, but basically my motivation is my congressman basically doesn't buy it he thinks it's a it's related to some hoax and well at least that's what he says so um, that's one of the things that motivated me the other thing is that I've presented a formal resolution document uh, drafted by Dr. Rosalind Peterson to ask for permission before any geoengineering occurs and the formal resolution by, uh, drafted by Dr. Rosalind Peterson is a, a formal document uh, documenting all the the valid science behind you know contrails, contrail pollution, um, NASA studies, etc. It's all formal stuff. It's no, there's no conjecture. And I presented it to basically every elected official in the near the whatever the two cities where I live, and basically they're all ignoring me. My local air quality control board says, oh, well, we're, you know, this, the things up in the air that are flying around, we have no jurisdiction over, although we may support something like that, but that's all we can do is you'll have three minutes to talk about it at our, I think they have meetings every, uh, twice a month, and so... And then when I called up the EPA, the EPA said, oh, uh, well, uh, we know about, uh, are you talking about the chemtrails? And I'm like, well, I don't know what they call them, but uh, they're spraying some stuff out of the back of these jets and they're not contrails. And they said, well, we'll give you the contrail hotline. And I'm like, well, why do you do that? Because they're not contrails. They turn off and on in mid-flight. They circle around and spray this stuff. And they said, well, here, here's the Contrail hotline. So call that Contrail hotline. And I've said this before. If you've heard it, um, you'll hear it again. When I called the EPA, they basically said, well, uh, there was a, actually a recorded message on saying, 
We are not aware of any jets spraying any, any chemicals. And so uh, please go to our website and read the information about how, how contrails are formed. And this is 2017 right now. Now I've been vi video documenting these, the local uh, geoengineering weather modification spraying program from my camera for the last probably four years. Um, all my elected officials have various uh, things that I've printed out and given to them, um, including the why in the world are they spraying videos and the formal uh, the geoengineering um, resolution. So I got to go now because the mosquitoes are starting to get to me and I can't see them. So have a wonderful day, evening, wherever you are.